welcome to BBC London News. A family from Enfield is demanding the Foreign Office and the St Lucian government step up their efforts to find out why their daughter died in a hotel pool. It's been more than a year since Hannah Defoe, the cousin of Tottenham player Jermaine Defoe, was electrocuted after going for a swim while on holiday. But an inquest into her death still hasn't been held. Mark Webber has been speaking to Hannah's mother. It's over a year since her death, yet Hannah Defoe's parents still don't really know how or why it happened. I have been told that the wheels of justice um, spin slowly in St Lucia and that I must be patient. And I'm trying. At the moment, she's a piece of paper lying on someone's desk. Just give me what I need to continue grieving knowing that I did the best for my daughter. Hannah was 20 when she died in this pool in the Juliet's Lodge in Viewfort in St Lucia. It happened in July last year. It was an hour and a half before emergency workers could remove her body because the pool still had too much electricity in it. A test the day after the incident showed the pool still had 180 volts passing through it. Now Hannah's family want to make sure that no one else suffers the same fate. Hannah is dead. Nothing I do, nothing I say, nothing they give me or don't give me will ever bring her back. But I don't want to sit in my living room a year from now and watch somebody else do this interview. This can be put right. Faulty wiring can be put right. The High Commissioner for St Lucia here in London didn't want to comment about the case, but it's known that he's spoken to the family in the past few days and promised them all the documentation they need ahead of a fresh inquest date in March. They want that to happen sooner. Mark Webber, BBC London News. A paedophile who was allowed to walk free after his 13-year-old victim was described as predatory is to have his sentence reviewed. Neil Wilson from Romford was given a 12-month jail sentence suspended for two years after admitting sexual activity with a child and making indecent images. Today it's been decided that judges at the Court of Appeal should look at whether the sentence was too lenient. Our Home Affairs correspondent Guy Smith has this report. It's a case that has reignited fierce criticism of how language is used in court. A 13-year-old girl, the victim of sexual abuse, was accused of being predatory earlier this month at Snaresbrook Crown Court. Just before the sentencing of 41-year-old Neil Wilson for having sex with a child, the prosecuting barrister, Robert Colliver, described the victim like this. The girl is predatory in all her actions and she is sexually experienced. There was sexual activity, but it was not of Mr Wilson's doing. You might say it was forced upon him, despite being older and stronger than her. The judge, Nigel Peters, then told the convicted paedophile that he was to be given a suspended term and said, on these facts, the girl was predatory and was egging you on. Today, some campaigners welcome the decision to refer the sentence to the Court of Appeal to decide if it was unduly lenient. I think it's very encouraging that the Attorney General has recognised that this was yet another very lenient sentence for a very vile crime and I'm pleased that he has referred it back to the Court of Appeal for, for review. It's absolutely appropriate and I think that's exactly what society demands of these cases. Judge Peters, seen here leaving court several weeks ago, is facing an official review of his use of language, as is the prosecuting barrister who has been suspended from sexual offence cases. This is not the first time lawyers, during trials of suspected child sex offenders, have been criticised. Guy Smith, BBC London News. A number of mosques and Muslim organisations in London have been sent Islamophobic DVDs containing offensive material. They were received around the time of the Muslim holiday Eid and include insults to the Prophet Muhammad. The Metropolitan Police said forensic teams are examining two of the discs. Helen Drew has been to the East London Mosque, which is one of the places that's received the material. A few mosques around London have received copies of this DVD. That includes a mosque in Acton in West London as well as one in Walthamstow. And the East London Mosque here has also received several copies of this DVD. And that DVD includes insults against the Prophet Muhammad as well as pornographic material. Now here they tell me it's not the first time they've received this sort of hate mail. 
they started receiving it after the London bombings. Then they got about one piece of hate mail a month, but they say recently, in the last couple of months, it's increased quite a lot. It's very insulting, um, you know, they're very vile, uh, you know, humiliating to the whole of the Muslim community, saying, uh, accusing us of things and swearing and calling us things uh, which are really, really completely out of order. The increase in this hate mail has happened since the murder of Lee Rigby in Woolwich in May and there have been a number of other attacks against the Muslim community across London. It started just a few days after the murder of Lee Rigby it, with a suspected arson attack on a mosque in Muswell Hill. Just days after that, another suspected arson attack on an Islamic boarding school in Chislehurst in Kent. Luckily, no one was hurt there. And then just yesterday, yet one more suspected arson attack, this time on a mosque in Harlow in Essex. Again, no one was hurt. Police have described this, though, as a mindless and dangerous act. Helen Drew with that report. Commuters had to be evacuated from a smoking train at the peak of rush hour this morning just outside Hither Green Station in south-east London. Passengers noticed smoke coming from near the wheels, forcing the train to make an emergency stop. Some people had to walk along the track to get to safety. It's believed the part of the carriage that takes electricity from the track had overheated. The line has now reopened. Now, with the football transfer window closing in one week's time, there's still plenty of business to be done for London's clubs. Our sports reporter Sarah Orchard is here and tonight Arsenal are in action. Yes, we've been hearing all about the Wayne Rooney, Manchester United, Chelsea saga and of course Tottenham and Gareth Bale is in his evening going. Arsenal are actually playing some football tonight in the Champions League. Now they're going to be playing Fenerbahce, it's in their playoff match in the Champions League. They're already 3-0 up our Arsenal and that pretty much guarantees them that all-important Champions League football group stage later this season. But still all the talk is about signings. They've been linked with a number of players this year. We're talking about the likes of Suarez, Di Maria, uh, Benzema, Kabay, but still no big signing going to Arsenal yet. It's prompted the manager Arsene Wenger to admit he is a bit short in some areas but he can't be forced to spend money just for the sake of it. You know I'm guided by uh, my conscience to do as well as I can for this club and by the vision of the game I want to play and uh, I feel with the players I have I can play the football we want to play and I'm a great admirer of uh, the spirit, the attitude of these players uh, they are special and uh, if I want to add something it has to be special. And I understand there's also been an announcement today from the British Paralympics Association. Yeah, it's a big week for them. On Thursday, we celebrate one year since the London 2012 Paralympics began. And they've announced a new big sponsor today, Mondelez International, better known for Cadbury's and Bassett's. But they'll be joining BT and Sainsbury's as the main sponsors of the BPA. It's significant because the chief exec has said today it did used to be quite hard to get these big sponsors involved in Paralympic sports. But the high profile of London 2012 has really helped move things forward in that area. Okay. Sorry, thank you. Now, best known for films such as The Crying Game and Made in Dagenham, the film producer Stephen Woolley's new project, Hyena, is a gritty tale of Albanian and Turkish gangs in the capital. Our entertainment correspondent Brenda Romanis has had exclusive on set access behind the scenes. And action! Strike, strike, strike! A police raid on suspected gangsters in West London. But despite these dramatic scenes, local residents peering through windows had nothing to be concerned about. This is a film crew on location for London writer and director Gerard Johnson's latest project. Hyena is a contemporary thriller where police, some of them corrupt, attempt to bring down ruthless Albanian gangsters. Stephen Woolley, renowned for films that tackle the underbelly of London life, produces this movie. Hyena really is about how London has changed. It's quite a tough movie. Uh, I think like Crying Game and Mona Lisa, people will be quite shocked by some of the things in the film. Um, but it's a world that we rarely see. It's a world that the general Londoner never really touches on or goes to. This is the final week of shooting for this contemporary London drama and a house on this quiet residential street in West Ealing is the location of five of the scenes. London actor Peter Fernando Hello. leads as a corrupt police officer. Hello. While Elisa Lasowski comes from roles in Game of Thrones and Summerstown oh, to play tragic Ariana. I play a young woman who's been trafficked into sex, well, 
sex trafficking to prostitution. Um, a young uh, Albanian woman, and um, it's a subject I knew about quite a bit already, actually, and uh, and really care about because I think there's a lack of awareness. Hyena is hoping for release next year. Brandon Manus, BBC London News. Now, alongside the hundreds of thousands of people enjoying themselves at Notting Hill Carnival this weekend, it seems the Met Police have been getting into the festival spirit too. More than 100,000 people have viewed this video online of police officers showing off their dance moves. And uh, I wish that I could tell you that she was here to show off her dance moves, but we'll settle for the weather with Kate Kinsella. Just about, Sonia. Good afternoon. Well, it's a bit of a slow start to today. There was a lot of mist and fog around, which was quite disrupted, but eventually the sun did win the battle, and we've got plenty of sunny spells to enjoy as we head through this afternoon. And also, it will feel rather warm as well. Now, there's just a very slight northeasterly breeze, not causing too much of a problem at all, very little in the way of cloud as we get to the latter part of the day. And the temperature we could see raising up to around 23 Celsius in central London, perhaps even a degree or two warmer in the sunshine. Now a nice end to the day as well, some evening sunshine to enjoy. And then as we head overnight, it's a bit of a repeat performance really to the last couple of nights. Some clear spells to start with, but then eventually the cloud will start to form. Some low cloud and some mist and fog likely to develop in some parts as well. Minimum temperature between 13 and 14 Celsius. So it's a rather similar start as we had this morning for tomorrow morning a gray misty murky start for some but eventually the sun will start to burn that back and we'll get some sunny spells through the rest of the afternoon and the temperature similar to today just a little bit more cloud tomorrow afternoon a minimum temperature of or maximum temperature rather of around 21 or 22 celsius now it's overnight wednesday into thursday we've got a cold front sinking south that's going to drag in some cloud so rather cloudy outlook for thursday and also friday and some fresh air heading our way for the weekend. Sonia. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's about it from us. Asad Ahmed will be here with our 6.30 evening programme, but for now, from all of us, do have a very good afternoon. Goodbye.